Hello, everyone. Welcome into another video. I hope you're all doing wonderful today. Uh, I just wanted to kind of bring this to your attention if you didn't already know about this. This is a completely free first person, true first person template that you can grab on Fab. And it is made by Treaty. So be sure to thank them if you can find them. I don't know if they're on social media or anything like that. Um, but it's a really great project to take a look at and you can learn a lot from it. You can use it as a base or a template for your own game. Um, we're going to take a look at it and I'm going to show you a couple of things. Talk a little bit about some of it, the reasons for using it, the reasons that I'm not personally going to be using all of it. Um, I'm really just using it more for like a guide, but it's perfectly fine if you want to use this as just your base character. I think that's totally fine. Um, it, it is also worth noting that there's two different projects that they have. There is the true first person movement project that is right here. And then there's also a first person movement uh, template. And this one is pretty cool. It's got some systems that are already built in. So like basic interaction, flashlight, doors, notes, those kind of things. Um, but the main drawback on this one is it doesn't have the true first person character. So it's just a an invisible body, just your arms only. If you really want that true first person uh, look, then you'll want to go with this one. Um, you could possibly integrate some of this stuff into the true first person project. I think that might be a little difficult. Um, that's another little bit of a caveat to using this. And we're going to take a look at the project and I'll show you why, because it does have kind of a complex, uh, animation blueprint. So, um, yeah, that's just a couple of things to keep in mind, but I would definitely recommend just taking a look at both of them, seeing what you like. You might want to use one or both as a guide or a template or something like that. And, uh, yeah, it's a great learning resource. So let's go ahead and take it, take a look at the actual project and we'll talk about a few things here. Okay. So in the project, if I go ahead and hit play here, uh, you'll see that we have all of our basic movement is already set up. We've got walk, run. Uh, crouch is already set up. Uh, really nice, like sideways animations. We've got turn in place, which is really nice. Uh, jumping is already set up. Basically, all of your movement that you're going to want want to set up. There are some things that I don't personally want or really need. There is a slide mechanic, so whenever you're running, you can hit uh, C to go into a slide. Um, it's a pretty neat thing. I mean, there's a lot of games that have that, but I just don't really need it for my game. So I am not really going to be using that. There's also some things like um, when you jump from a high location and there's a unique um, kind of uh, animation that plays there on a hard landing like that. There's also a lean left and right, which works pretty good. And again, this is all really well done because you can see like the torso there is actually moving. So there's a specific animation for that leaning. And um, there are uh, aim offsets set up. So like when you're looking down, if I pop out, you can see we are uh, actually looking down there. My camera is all messed up now. Let me go back into this. Uh, if we look up, go out there and you can see that we're looking up. So that is not super important for um, the kind of games that I normally make, make that are not multiplayer or um, not co-op because you're not really ever going to see your body. I mean, sometimes you can see your shadow and it can be, you know, a little bit more immersive to see your character actually looking up and down. But to be honest, I don't really ever notice that whenever I don't have an aim offset. So it's one of those things that I think I could live with or without it. Um, and then uh, speaking about multiplayer, this is fully set up for replication. So that's really nice if you need it. But again, I don't uh, really ever intend on making a multiplayer game or a co-op game or anything like that. So um, that's one of the, maybe one of the biggest reasons that I'm not using this is just like the base template. Because there's a lot of things in the character that I don't necessarily want or need. And just to keep things kind of as simple as possible, I like to still create my character from scratch. Um, but I think that this is a great project to use as a guide to kind of look how they're doing some stuff, see how you can set some things up. Uh, let's take a look at the actual character here. 
and you can take a look how they've set things up. Um, there is quite a bit of stuff in here. And like I said, everything is set up for replication as well. So um, there's a lot of things that, like I said, I just don't need. So uh, the way that I would recommend working with this project is to either make a copy of this character, um, go in here, make a copy into like a separate folder, and then maybe take some of the stuff out that you don't need. Or the way that I'm doing it is I like to just create a character from scratch or either work off of like the third person template and then just use this as a guide and kind of see what they're adding in here. Um, the animation blueprint is another thing that is quite complex. So um, pretty basic stuff here. But we do have a lot of stuff that they're doing here to handle all of the different types of movement because there are so many different th things that they're doing as far as um, turning in place and the aim offsets and everything like that. It's not too crazy complicated, but if you're a beginner and you've never really worked with any of this stuff, it can get very confusing, especially when you want to go and add something to it, right? So like... It works great like this, but if we want to go and maybe add like a flashlight in the future, then that can be a little bit more complex working with all of this stuff. So uh, that's another reason why I just like to kind of start from scratch and make my own. Um, so I know that how everything works and how everything is set up here. We can see that the different state machines that they have, again, they're, you know, not the craziest thing that I've ever seen, but they are definitely more on the advanced sides for all of these different um, uh, states and conditions that they have. So yeah, just keep that in mind when you are looking through this and definitely keep that in mind if you're gonna be using this as your actual template that you're gonna be setting up. Um, now, one of the first things that I wanted to disable because I really did not like it was the, um, the idle animation. It's quite aggressive in my opinion just like the breathing idle animation that they have going on. And it actually even makes me a little queasy, which I don't normally get sick or like motion sickness or anything from first person games, but there's a lot of movement going on and it's just like this really kind of slow movement. And I'm not really a big fan of that. So I wanted to just disable that. And if you wanna do that, the quickest way to do that is just to go into the anim graph here uh, go to the unarmed movement uh, on ground, stand, and then go into the idle. And you can either replace the idle animation or you can just set the play rate to zero. So if we do that and then compile, then this animation is basically just stopped now. Uh, but you'll notice that if we play, uh, we're still doing that animation, right? And that's because they have an additional um let's see where is it so if we take a look at the character here on the event tick they have this server head bob and if we take a look at this they are doing a lot of stuff in here they're playing a lot of different types of camera shake i personally don't really want any camera shake um, especially not the idle animations or anything like that so you could go through and disable some of this stuff I think it's honestly easiest just to unhook this and then compile and then we now don't have anything going on. Um, you still get like a little bit of a, a head sway whenever you're walking and then you know like a little bit more when you're running. I think that's perfectly fine for me. It is just a personal preference maybe. Um, so yeah, that was one of the first things that I disabled. And we're also just saving some resources by just not having all of that stuff run on tick, which is fine. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but if you don't need it, then you might as well disable it. But yeah, you can look through all of this and maybe just get some ideas and just take a look at it for yourself and see what you want to implement and include or leave out. Uh, like I said, what I would recommend doing is creating a character from scratch or using the third person template like I've done on the channel before. Um, if you wanna see the uh, tutorial for that, I'll leave a link for that below. Uh, you can absolutely just start with that and then just add things from this character over that you want. 
And personally, I think that that's the way to go because, like I said, there's just so much stuff on here that you probably don't need, and it'll be better to just customize it yourself. Now, going forward in my own first-person project and the kind of tutorial project that I've been showing on the channel here to make a bunch of stuff, I'll mostly just be sticking with that basic character that we started with that I showed you guys how to make. And then, um, you know, again, using that other project as a little bit of a guide, learning how to do some stuff, seeing how some things are done. I do like the way that they're doing the sound. Um, so I did set that up on my character and I'll make a video on that to show how they're doing the footsteps because I think that works, works really well. And there's going to be a lot of other stuff that I'm going to be showing how to do here. I've got player death animation, flashlight animations that I'm working on, health component uh, inventory widgets, all of that kind of stuff will be coming up in the near future. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, but yeah, that is pretty much it for now. I just wanted to make a quick video and just talk about that and just let everyone know. Uh, be sure to go and check it out. It's a really great project and I hope you guys can get some good use out of it. So until next time, I will see you guys on the next video. All right. Take care, guys.